moments in your life that you never forget. One of mine was when I realized that being native was going to be a problem for some people. I was three or four. My dad was bragging at my school about how I had taught myself to read. A white guy, the dad of one of the other kids in my class, took me aside and told me I was never going to amount to anything because I was Indian and a girl. Fortunately, this was also the first time I was introduced to Batman and Superman. <laughs> now, you might find it weird that a native girl uh, looked to two white guys in spandex and black rubber <laughs> for uh, the building of her schemas related to justice and self-worth for later life. But I saw a lot of myself in them that I didn't see in other TV shows or movies. Superman, like me, had grown up in a small community, feeling like an outsider as he straddled two worlds. I straddled the Cree community and the larger world and was trying to fit into both. I was inspired by Superman's optimism and how he always saw the best in people. I wanted to be like him, to always use my gifts to help others and to make the world better by working hard to make it so. I grew up on the Mistapaista Cree Nation in northern Manitoba, the last stop for gas on the Highway 6. <laughs> I was an angry little girl. I hated my home community because I saw no one that wanted to make it better. I was frustrated with how people mistreated us because of our skin color. And I was ashamed that our side of the river had dirt roads and the other side of the river where most of the white people live had cement roads. But this was why I liked Batman. His city was basically my reserve. And unlike Superman, Batman was angry too. But Batman was using his anger as fuel to make his city better. He wanted me to use my anger for positivity and never turn it inward. Though I felt more like Batman, I wanted to be Superman. I see Superman as my guiding spirit as he taught me to be proud of who I was. There's a line in the Richard Donner movie where Superman's father, Jarrell, tells him to always hold in your heart the pride of your special heritage. I felt that Superman cared about everyone in the world, including this Indian girl that was never going to amount to anything. And he taught me to strive for something more, to never give up, and to face a difficulty and turn my back on it. My mom gave me two great gifts. One was my sister, and the other was showing me all the movies she loved. Her taste in movies around the spectrum from Indiana Jones to Mannequin to Over the Top. <laughs> Though my dad was always trying to put on movies like Little Mermaid for my sister and I to watch, I always loved the movies my mom would put on, even though the most of them would scar me for life. <laughs> The scene with the fake grail from Last Crusade gave me nightmares for about a year. <laughs> Though hated by the, most of the mainstream critics, the majority of the movies my mom showed me were like my first film school. Mom's film school taught me three things. One, the world is bigger than the reserve. Two, magic existed. And three, it wasn't so bad to be the junior to someone's senior. But I hated seeing the same white faces in the midst of brown faces that were always the crowd and never the lead. I hated seeing stories about people being forced off their land be the only time I would see a native person on TV. I was always a writer. Creating stories for school projects was always my preferable homework as ideas came easily to me. I was inspired by everything, from the TV and movies I watched to the books I read. I read every single book in my school's library by the time I was 13 and asked my mom to start bringing home new ones from the nearby town of the Paw, two hours away. <laughs> I wanted to be a writer, but had no idea how to do that. It wasn't a concrete physical job like being a waitress, a nurse, or a hydro worker, jobs my parents and grandparents could understand. So I read Stephen King's On Writing when I was 14 to see if he could tell me how to be a writer. He said I should keep reading and writing, 
but Stephen was quiet on the details on how a native girl from a reserve becomes a writer. <laughs> One of the superpowers of being a native person is being immediately able to recognize another native person. One of the first native people I saw on TV and something I liked was West Study in Street Fighter playing an Asian guy. <laughs> The other native on TV and something I liked was Tatanka, a native wrestler in the WWF. Sure, there were native people on shows like North of 60, a show my mom, grandma, and dad were obsessed with, but it was too much like my real life. Why would I want to watch a show set on a reserve that was sad all the time? No hate to them. <laughs> I would rather see Tanaka, Tatanka beating up Lex Luger or Wes Study being best friends with General M. Bison. But I found other heroes I connected with in ways I hadn't experienced before. Spock from Star Trek became a hero of mine because of his dual identity and trying to live in two worlds while trying to fit into both of them. I adopted Leonard Nimoy as a surrogate grandfather as I felt he looked so native that I thought he should be. <laughs> My other hero was Trini, the yellow ranger from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TV show. Though, at the time, I was well aware how racist it probably was to have an Asian woman play a yellow ranger. <laughs> she was almost as important to me as Batman and Superman. Because Trini was a pale brown girl, and the first pale brown girl I ever saw on TV. When I was a kid, I would be called an apple, red on the outside, white on the inside, for not being a real native because of my skin tone. Trini taught me that being a pale brown girl didn't make you less a part of your culture. I graduated high school at 17 and went on to university, the first person in my family to do so. I focused on getting a real job, suppressing my writing to what I did in my spare time for my own amusement. When I graduated, I thought about going on to, uh, to grad school for psychology or even law school and got into the best schools in the country but neither path lit me up. The media hadn't changed. There was no more native people on TV than there had been when I was a kid. So I realized that this was only gonna change if I did something about it. So I went to university again to study filmmaking at the University of Winnipeg. I was terrified to see that I was the oldest person in the class amongst all these kids who had all made films before. I had no clue what I was doing and wanted to quit. Everything I wrote felt wrong, as I was still writing in that mentality I had learned long ago from the media. Superman can only be a white man, and not me. My first class at university was taught by Shereen Jarrett. She had become my mentor, the Obi-Wan to my Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Shereen taught me my most important lesson, write your own stories. It was a simple lesson, but I hadn't really thought about it before. I thought I had to write like Stephen King or Guillermo del Toro and tried to make copies of what they had done. Shereen's lesson forced me to think long and hard about what I wanted to say and show the world. My first film was Crash Light, based on a story from my childhood. When I was a kid, my grandma Virginia would always tell me, Sonia, be more normal. I often wondered why I couldn't be. While on a trip to the pod with my dad, I was reading a Superman comic in the car when I became car sick just as I got to a full page spread of kryptonite and threw up all over it. <laughs> I realized at that moment that I was a superhero, <laughs> that I hadn't found my powers yet, and this was why grandma was always telling me to be normal. She didn't want anyone to find out about my alien ancestry. The majority of the films I write come from a place in my own past. My forthcoming film, Eagle Girl, was based on my first powwow from my grandma, where I was gifted an eagle feather so large, I thought it had come from the Lord of the Eagles and the Hobbit. <laughs> my first feature film, WWC, which is about a group of teenage girls that start a wrestling promotion on their reserve, came from my preteen and teen years, where my friends and I were obsessed with WWF, and would practice the moves on, on each other, even though you're not supposed to practice the moves on each other. 
The writing of these stories was a solve for the soul of the little Indian girl I was, who felt alone with her absence from the media. I did it so that in some small way, I changed the world, or at least the world in me. I hadn't realized that there was a whole new generation of native kids who all wanted what I wanted when I was a child. I presented Crash Site at a school here in Winnipeg to an assembly of great ones to sixes. The gym was absolutely quiet as the movie played, and I was terrified. Everyone was having a terrible time. The last shot of the movie comes up, and everyone cheers, and I wanted to cry. I was ru uh, rushed by everyone, and all these kids were asking me if I was going to make the film longer, if I was going to put them in their next movie. <laughs> but I think the best thing I heard from that day was when a little girl asked her teacher if she could go as the superhero I created for Crash Site. For my film Crash Site, the main character meets a superhero. I wanted that superhero to be Superman, but I couldn't use him, obviously. So I asked myself, who would Superman be if he had my life? So I created Thunderbird. Thunderbird shares Superman's origin story, but it's more like a, uh, like a good version of Spider-Man's Venom in that she shares her identity with a sentient metal that forms her costume. Her civilian identity is a Cree girl named Maggie, a teenager who lives with her grandma on a reserve known for its UFO sightings. When she first reveals her powers to the world, she's unsure of what she's capable of, but tells herself, I don't know what I can do, but still I gotta freaking try. <laughs> <laughs> I became a filmmaker at 27, and it took me that long to realize that Superman didn't want me to be him. He wanted me to be myself, to change the world in the ways I could, and inspire others to do so. Through her creation, I feel that Thunderbird embodies every single thing I thought Superman saw in all of us. We all have strengths, and we all have the power to change our worlds. Writing and filmmaking have lit me up with the same inspiration I felt when I first saw Superman fly, and I feel it is my duty to help others find that same spark. I wanted to end today with a quote from my surrogate grandpa, who is not Cree, but I've adopted him, so now he is, <laughs> Leonard Nimoy. I'm a great believer in what we have been told by people like Joseph Campbell. Find your bliss. Find out what touches you the most deeply. Pursue it. Learn about it. Explore it. Expand on it. Live with it and nurture it. Find your own way and make your own contributions. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.